Have you ever felt broken before? Have you ever felt I'm not good enough? I'm not talented enough. I'm not wealthy enough. I'm not healthy enough. I'm not sexy enough. There's something wrong with me. People who win World Cups, people who, you know, they go for big things. When you talk to them in private, they're scared of dreaming big. People who have fame, fortune, good looks, they have everything. You talk to them in private, they're scared of going big. Winning is not just for athletes. And we do have something in common with athletes. The distance between an elite athlete and a trophy is the exact same distance between you and your next big dream. This distance, the distance between our ears, it's in our mindset. Good afternoon, I'm so happy to be here today. My name is Florencia and something you might not know about me is that I was born and raised and spent the first 40 years of my life in Latin America. But four years ago, I moved to Europe, and this is my first time back in a Latin American stage in four years, and it feels good. It feels really good. Um, I should not be here, by the way, because this was the one month in the year that me and my team had agreed on no traveling Florencia. But then the Mind Valley team said, do you know where AFS is happening? I said, no. And they said, Colombia. And I heard, Colombia. And I could feel my hips going, Shakira, Shakira. So here I am to talk about the one topic that is most um, close to my heart right now and I feel mo most passionate about, which is winning is a mindset. And today we're going to unlock four keys to, to produce magical results in our lives. Are you ready? Let's pretend we're Latin for a minute. Let me, let me ask again. Are we ready? Yeah, yeah that feels better. And I'm going to start by sharing the story of a young boy with a big dream. This boy, yeah, he pretty much dreamed about playing football his entire life. And uh, he got pretty good at it. He started playing and practicing. And so his parents thought, the boy is good. Let's go and take him for a tryout in one of the big clubs. And so they take him, and there's a bunch of guys there who are deciding which kid they're gonna sign and which kid they're not gonna sign. And so when they look at him, they think, he is good, but what is wrong with him? He's too small. Let's get him checked with the doctors. And so they get him checked. And yes, in fact, he did have a problem, and not a small problem if you want to be a football player. He had a growth hormone deficiency problem. In essence, he was born with a, with a problem that would not allow his body to grow. And so these people who are deciding who they're going to sign, they look at him and they go, uh, we're not signing a kid who was born broken. Have you ever felt broken before? Have you ever felt I'm not good enough? I'm not talented enough. I'm not wealthy enough. I'm not healthy enough. I'm not sexy enough. There's something wrong with me. Well, this kid, yeah, he was born with a broken body but he was definitely not born with a broken mindset. And so he said, I'm going to keep dreaming. I'm going to keep believing. And I will do whatever it takes to make this dream come true. Even if they say it is impossible, that it is physically impossible, whatever it takes. And if that means that every day I have to stick a needle in my leg just to see if my body will want to grow, I will do that. And he kept going, and he kept dreaming. And at one point he said, yes, I'm not as tall as the rest. I'm not as strong as the rest. I will just have to learn how to play football in a different way. And this boy, who was nicknamed La Pulga in his home country, which in English means the flea, because of how tiny he was, became the biggest player of all times. Because this is the true story of Lionel Messi. Yes, it is, and you can give him a hand. The guy who created history in football. The guy who just won a World Cup at age 35 after trying for 16 years. The guy who was named seven times best player in the world in three different decades, which says a lot about him. And once he was asked, did you ever dream about this? And he said, I've been dreaming about this big dream my entire life. And the reason I admire this guy so much, it's not because of how well he plays football, and it's not because we were both born in the same country, but it is because of his extraordinary talent to take a problem. Just imagine wanting to play football and being born with that problem. He took a problem, transformed it into a new, uh, an opportunity using his mindset. 
And maybe you're looking at this and you think, cool story, Florencia, but just in case you didn't notice, I am no Lionel Messi. I'm not only, uh, let's see, how many of you are elite athletes? Raise your hands. <laughs> not many. Well, winning is not, a few, we, we do have a few, but winning is not just for athletes. And we do have something in common with athletes. The distance between an elite athlete and a trophy is the exact same distance between you and your next big dream. This distance, the distance between our ears, it's in our mindset. And today we will see four practical ways to unlock crazy possibilities in our lives. So, step number one, key number one, have big dreams. Did you know that most people do not dream big enough? Even the ones who think they're dreaming big enough, they don't. Why do I know this? Because for many years I coach elite athletes, people who win World Cups, people who, you know, they go for big things. When you talk to them in private, they're scared of dreaming big. I coach celebrities for many years. People who have fame, fortune, good looks, they have everything. You talk to them in private, they're scared of going big. Why do I know this? And this one might surprise you, because I teach this. Um, about a year ago, I was talking with my son, my 10-year-old son, about having big dreams, and so the power of having a big, scary dream. And so he looks at me and he goes, so mom, what's your next big dream? And I say, well, uh, I'm working on a new book. And he goes, oh, another book? I go, well, honey, writing a book is a pretty big deal, you know. I goes, yeah, mom, but you said that dreams are supposed to be scary and exciting, and you've been doing that for many years. That's not scary for you. And I go, well, yeah, um, I'm also planning on, on growing the business. And he goes, mom, you're so boring. I want something scary and exciting. And so I look at him and I say, well, okay, listen, my boring job? pays the bills, takes you on vacation, it's getting late, time to take a shower and go to bed. But that night, as I go to bed, it dawns on me, the kid was right. I was teaching this and it had been a long time since I had my own big scary dream. It had been a long time. And so I realized that I, I was not the same Florencia I was 15 years ago. You see, at the beginning of my journey, I was, I was a go-getter. I was a bold dreamer. I was a girl who would knock on every door, who would get a hundred no's until I got a yes. I would take risks. I would fail. I would then try again. But at one point, my business grew. I became more well-known. My books became bestsellers, whatever. And at one point, I said, uh, let's take things a little bit more cautiously, you know. And so I went from playing to win to playing not to lose. And let me show you now what playing not to lose looks like. So playing not to lose, in essence, is you keep on doing what you know how to do. So in essence, what you do is you avoid taking risks. And by avoid taking risks, you also avoid failure. And by avoiding failure, I avoid feeling dumb. And by avoid feeling dumb, um, in some point, I could feel safe. But do you sense a problem here? I could feel safe, but I was not, I was not growing. I was not growing anymore. Have you ever, let's see, let's do a quick thing. Close your eyes for a moment. It's a quick show of hands, nobody will see except me, so you can be brutally honest. Raise your hand if, if you have not had a big scary dream for a long time. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. If you do have a big scary dream, but it's so far away that you feel completely disconnected from it, raise your hand. Raise your hand if you deeply feel that you could be playing a bigger game than the one you're playing. Raise your hand. All right. Now you can open your eyes. And let me just tell you something. We're all together here. If you raise your hand, you're in the right place. If you did not raise your hand, you're in the right place. You know why? Because we all human beings have one thing in common. We all want to live the highest and the truest expression of ourselves. And so no matter where you are in your life right now, you all have, we all have a next level. Yet sometimes we don't even know what that next level looks like. Uh, a while ago, I was coaching a very famous athlete, very famous one, top of the game. He comes to me and he says, I have a problem. And I say, what's that? And he says, I have not won a Grand Slam in two years, and it's getting on me. 
And so I look at him and I say, so what's your big dream? And he says, well, what do you mean? I want to go back to playing well. I want to go back to my level. And I said, that's all? Come on, dream bigger. What's your dream? He says, well, I would like to win a Grand Slam this year. Okay, how fast do you want that to happen? Well, if it happens within one year, I'd be happy. What is the fastest you want that to happen? He says, well, the US Open is happening within five weeks. That would be nice. And so I look at him and I ask him, can you allow yourself to dream about winning the US Open in five weeks? He goes, heck yeah. What do you think happened in five weeks? Did he win? Yes, he did win. Now, here's the interesting part, because he won the US Open in five weeks, but did his level of talent change in five weeks? Yes or no? No. Did his opponent's level of talent had drastically dropped in five weeks? Yes or no? No. The only thing that changed was his mindset. He set his mind to believe that that big dream was possible. And so he did it, and, he, and it came true. And by the way, he won three out of the five Grand Slams that year. And so now, I want you to think about what your next big dream is. And in a moment, I will have you write it down in one short, powerful sentence. But I want you to consider two aspects before you write. First one is, can you make it bigger? Can you make it bigger? Bigger might be um, adding a zero to your revenue goal. Bigger could be if your goal is or your dream is to write a book, become international bestseller, or take your business across the border, whatever that is. Can you make it bigger? And the second aspect to consider is, can you make it faster? The time we give ourselves to do something is usually the time it takes us to do it. So can you make it bigger in, in size? Can you make it shorter in time? And now I'll give you a minute, write it down. One powerful sentence. My next big dream is, it could be personal, professional, whatever you want to dream about, just write it down. All right. So key number one, have big dreams. And remember, we all tend to dream smaller and we all tend to give ourselves too much time to achieve them. So go bigger, go faster. Step number two is big words. What do I mean by big words? The words we speak create realities. Do we know this, yes or no? Yes, because they change our subconscious mind, they produce a change in reality. Is that true or not? Yes. Okay, now, what are the two most powerful words according to research? I am, I am. In Spanish, yo soy. In French, je suis. In Italian, yo sono. In Chinese, I have no idea. But what I do know, what is, oh, hi, oh, oh, hi. We always learn something new, thank you. Um, what I do know is that the two most powerful words, according to research, are I am, because whatever we say after them shapes our destiny. Why? Because our subconscious mind, whenever we say I am, takes us at a command. And this is the thing. I know you all know this. We all know, right? Yet study after study shows that we don't practice it. We don't. Quick quiz again. How many thoughts do we have per day? Yeah, yeah, it, it, there, there's a debate, but a minimum of 50,000, right? How many and what percentage of those thoughts are negative? 80%. And about those 80%, how many are about our own selves? Most of them. Most of them. 80% our self-talk is negative. So, um, this is stressful, right? Let me just do something to de-stress for a second. No? What? Why not? Not good for me? How do you know? There, there's research. There's research that shows what? That this is bad for you. We've all seen the horror photos, right? I wish we had horror photos that showed what our negative, crappy self-talk does to us. What if we had a horror photo that showed what our negative self-talk does to our self-esteem, to our mental health, and to our results? Because maybe, maybe just maybe, if we had the horror photos, we would decide 
that doing this is just as toxic as doing this. And we would quit them both in a second. Now, we know this, we don't practice it. We think that self, positive self-talk is, uh, well, it's kind of like a feel-good little thing that doesn't really change anything, right? Well, self-talk is the fastest way to produce a self-fulfilling prophecy on a neurobiological level. And that sounds super complex and it's super easy. When you have conscious, positive self-talk, your brain releases chemicals that not only make you feel good, make you perform better. Check this out. Do we have tennis fans in the house? Raise your hands. Okay, we do have a few. Even if you're not a tennis fan, you've probably seen or heard these names before. Roger Federer and Rafael Nadal. Have you ever heard of them? Well, I'm glad you do because they have dominated the game of tennis for a decade or more. They dominated to a point that other Grand Slam players thought it was completely impossible to beat them. Until one day, a young guy, who nobody knew, came out and publicly said, I'm gonna beat them. And everybody thought, who does he think he is? Nobody knows him. He comes from a country with no tradition in tennis. And he says he's gonna beat the two kings of the sport? Who does he think? He's so cocky. This guy was Novak Djokovic. Have you heard his name? Yes, you have, because he became the number one player in the world. He beat them, of course, and not only that, he won more Grand Slams than Federer and Nadal. It was not cockiness, it was confidence. And he had the confidence to take his dream and make it public. You know how many times we have a dream, but then we say, I I'm, I'm not gonna share, because who knows, just in case. Do you ever do that? Just in case. When we do the just in case thing, we put a huge question mark ne next to our dream, and it doesn't work. So guess what we're gonna do next? Remember what you wrote? We're gonna make your dream go public. Mm. <laughs> I, I see some horror faces. I see people thinking, oh, why did I get into this room and how do I escape this room? You're gonna have fun and it's super easy and it's powerful. Please get uh, together with someone sitting next to you, get in pairs. If you don't have a pair, raise your hand, look around, sit with someone else, but you need to work with someone. One of you will be A, the other will be B. When I say go, one will start, the other is silent, listening. When I say change, what do you do? You change, you got it. Okay, now decide who is going to be A, raise your hands. Wait, and there you go, now you are A, you. you we have the A's, okay. You will, you will have 60 seconds to share, all right? When 60 seconds go by, I say change, and you say change wherever you are. When I say go, B starts, go. B starts. <laughs> all right, time to change. Now A shares. All right. I love it when this happens because it means you are you're lightening up your dreams. But we're moving on. Listen, there will be we still have a day left of AFES. So I encourage you to keep on doing this. Okay? Keep on talking about your dreams. Did anybody here experience as they were sharing their dream that a part of your brain went, yeah, mm. yeah. I, and thank you for the honesty because not, not many people will, will acknowledge that sometimes when the big dream we have is either so big or so different from our current reality, our brain might go, yeah, right. This is something that happens when I start working with people and I, I coach women to build online businesses so they can have a lifestyle they love. And sometimes they tell me things like, yeah, well, I tell myself I'm gonna build an online business that's gonna give me freedom, financial independence, flexibility. And then my brain goes, quick reality check. Uh, you have a nine to five that you hate, a job that you cannot stand, a boss that is terrible and you don't have enough money for rent. So how do we build a winning mindset when our reality is so different 
from what we dream. That is when we tap into the power of our subconscious mind. There's many ways, but this is my favorite one of all. So what I do every single day, it only takes me 90 seconds, and that's why I love it, because when I say I have no time, this is 90 seconds, and all I do, I usually do it after a meditation, but even if I don't have or I skip the meditation, I do this every day. I rehearse in my mind being the person that is already happier, healthier, wealthier, sexier, whatever you want to do. I rehearse in my mind already having more influence, more impact, more flexibility. It only takes 90 seconds, and every day you can change up a little of the things you see. When you do that, you create a new reality in your mind. And as you know, the mind doesn't tell the difference between real reality and imagined one. And if you do this every single day with presence and consciousness, your subconscious mind will make sure that the ideal you happens 10 times faster. So I, I recommend you do it. Okay, so big dreams. We stretch the dream, we shorten the time frame, we use the big words, the I am with power, with consciousness. And now we're going into the big actions. So here is the time when we go from dreaming about it and visualizing and all the nice stuff to actually doing it. And when we give that step, it could well happen that emotions, this thing that Eric was portraying so masterfully, emotions can take a hold of us. Because emotions are great guides, but they're very poor masters. And with the mere thought that, what if I fail? So what if I invest money, time, energy, and this project completely bombs? With that mere thought, we feel nervous, we feel anxious, we feel scared. And I know that emotional mastery is a huge subject, and I'm not even going to try to cover it in the 20 minutes we got left. I was a professor in the university in the Master's of Coaching degree, um, and my class was called Emotional Mastery, so I know that there's a lot to be talked about. But today I want to give you the one tool, one tool, that I know can produce instant change in your emotions. Instant. It can take you from feeling nervous and anxious and scared to feeling empowered and ready and confident. Ready for it? I discovered this tool 13 years ago when I was facing one of my biggest professional challenges in my entire career. I had just been signed as a speaker for Sony Music, which was a very rare thing because Sony Music would only take, you know, musicians on tour. And the president of Sony Music thought it was a great idea that we had our opening night in the Maipo Theater. If you've ever been to Buenos Aires, this is the most iconic theater, I would say, even in Latin America. This is where the best ballet dancers perform, where the best opera singers sing, and for some reason, we were doing our opening night there. And so, we were having a rehearsal, and I remember this so vividly, as if it were, it was many years ago, but I remember. And so we were doing the, checking the lights and the sound, and I was standing in the theater and doing my visualization thing, and I'm imagining this whole place filled with people, and then, Suddenly, one man walks in. He was in his, like, 70s or something. So he walks over, he introduces himself. Nice to meet you. I've been running this theater for 40 years, and I don't think I know your name. What kind of artist are you? And I go, <laughs> and so he goes, um, are you a singer? No, no, sir, I'm not a singer. Do you play instruments? No. Are you actress? N no, sir, no. <laughs> you're, are you a dancer? Well, after a few drinks, I can make my moves. I'm trying to make him smile. He's not even smiling. And now he looks at me and he says, what kind of artist are you? And so I say, I'm a motivational speaker. And he looks at me like I just landed from outer space. He says, you're a what? Motivational speaker, sir. I speak and I motivate people to go for their dreams. And he says, and people are going to pay <laughs> to come to listen to you speak in this theater? And I say, yes, <laughs> of course, with a fake smile <laughs> and a fake sense of confidence. 
And the moment he walked out the room, I felt like a bag of poop had been dropped on my head and was dripping all over me. And I started to obsess around the thought, what if this is one huge mistake? This guy knows this. Nobody's going to pay a ticket. We're going to embarrass ourselves. And the next two weeks were one long proof of what emotions can do to you when you don't master them. I'm talking about tossing and turning in bed, all kind of emotions. I'm talking about snapping at my husband and my kids for no reason. I'm talking about anxiety, diarrhea all day long. It was not pretty. And so at one point, I thought, you know what, this is ridiculous. We're 10 days away from the event. No tickets have been sold. And so I'm about to call Sony Music and tell them we're going to cancel this whole ridiculous idea off. And as I'm about to do that, and I'm about to grab my phone, for some reason, I suddenly remember a mantra, a powerful mantra that was taught to me by Jack Canfield, a friend, former mentor. And he taught me this many years ago, so I have no idea why I remember that on that spot. And he said, Florencia, whenever you want to go for something, but you feel scared or you're nervous or you're anxious, activate this powerful mantra. It will shift everything for you. And so I said, okay, fine. Do you want to learn it? Yeah? Okay, let's do something. So in order to learn this, I'm going to be playing some music and we will be chanting a few ohms. And please chant with me because I'm bad at this. And after we chant a few ohms, we will be chanting the mantra. Before we do that, just can you tap into the feelings of uh, nervousness or uneasiness or being a little scared of your big dream? Can you tap into that? If you can't, if you don't feel a little scared, you're not dreaming big enough. So come on, tap into that thing of like, what if I don't make it? What if it's not there? What if I embarrass myself? And now we will go and chant, all right? And here we will be playing some music. All right. Take a deep breath in. And out. In again. Out. One more time. We're going to start chanting. Last time, and we start chanting our mantra. Just follow me. Om. Deep breath in. Here we go. Oh, what the heck? Go for it anyway. Open your eyes. Oh, what the heck? Go for it anyway. Stand up. Oh, what the heck? Go for it anyway. Open your eyes and stand up. We're going to move our bodies. Oh, what the heck? Go for it anyway. Imagine we have an energy ball. We're going to bounce it from the floor to the sky. Here we go. Oh, what the heck? Go for it anyway. Oh, what the heck? Go for it anyway. Oh, what the heck? Go for it anyway. One more time. Oh, what the heck? Go for it anyway. With some energy. Oh, what the heck? Go for it anyway. Freestyle it. Oh, what the heck? Go for it anyway. Oh, what the heck? Go for it anyway. One more time. Oh, what the heck? Go for it anyway. Go for it anyway. Whew. Can you feel the energy shift? That was good. <laughs> this is a little bit of a joke, but not so much. Not so much. I cannot tell you how many times I have told myself, Florencia, what the heck? Go for it anyway. Sometimes we feel we have to get rid of anxiety and get rid of fear and feel absolutely confident. That's bullshit. You don't need to get rid of them. They will always be there. In fact, they might be a sign that you're going big. 
So all you got to do is grab those emotions by the hand and tell them, let me take you dancing. Oh, what the heck? And you do it, okay? So opening night finally came for us. And here's the thing about Latin American theaters. They're very beautiful, but it works like this. You don't know how many people bought the ticket because they buy it on the spot. And so we're there with my mother because I was doing this with my mom. And we're standing in the backstage of this beautiful theater. And there's a big red velvet garden. And we hear some voices there. And so we think, well, someone came. Might be friends and family, but what the heck? Let's do it anyway. And so we're standing there, and the big red velvety curtains rise, and our jaws dropped. Because this is what we saw. <laughs> Thank you. We had a full house, and we had the longest, loudest, most unforgettable standing ovation we had ever dreamed of. And my big learning was never wait for emotions to totally settle, do it anyway. All right, and we're stepping on to our fourth key for today. So we got the big dreams, we stretched them out, we shortened the time, we used the big words, we take the big actions no matter what, and then what? I call this the big moves. What do I mean by big moves? I mean the big decisions. What do I mean by big decisions? The decisions that move the ball forward. Now, the problem is that many times we think we're moving the ball forward, but we aren't. And we think we're moving the ball forward because we are very busy. We work a lot. And maybe we're super responsible and diligent and very, very busy all day long. But what if I told you that being busy does not equal moving the ball forward in your business and your life. What if your busy schedule was getting in the way of making your dreams come true? What if your busy schedule was your excuse to not make the big decisions that you know you need to make in order to transform your life? That's exactly what happened to me. So for more than 10 years, I had a big dream in the back of my mind. And the big dream was, what if I took everything I've built in the Spanish-speaking world, what if I took it to the English-speaking market? And then I would look at my schedule and I'd be like, yeah, right, you need to buy a new life. It's undoable. I'm running my business, I'm very busy, I'm a mother of two kids, undoable, maybe next life. And so I would just like push it away. And then one day, as I shared before, my 10-year-old son comes and says, mom, it's been a long time since you've gone for a big dream. And so I realized I was saying, I have no time for this. And so I did what I usually tell my clients to do when they say I have no time. I told, them to, I I told myself to do a brutally honest self-audit of my time. And I strongly recommend that if you feel you have no time, do a brutally honest self-audit. What this looks like is you take an entire week and you analyze everything you do, everything, hour by hour. I did that. And at the end of that week, I realized, uh, I'm trying to find a way to explain what I realized. Have you guys read the book by Tim Ferriss, The Four Hour Work Week? Okay, some of you did. For those of you who have not, in essence, he explains you should be spending 80% of your time in 20% of the activities that drive the big results. Well, I was far from that. Let's just put it that way. I was very far from that. I was busy, I was working a lot, but I'm very ashamed to say that most of the things that I was doing were not that important. We're not moving the ball forward. And that is what I call productive procrastination. It's not the type of procrastination where you lay in bed and watch Netflix all day long, no. It's a type where you keep yourself busy doing a ton of things and you don't do what you know you should be doing. So if you resonate with this in any degree, I invite you to write down this, the, the following question and take it and work with this when you go back home. What are the three big decisions that you made in the last three months? Big decisions, the ones that move the ball forward in your business and in your life. And in the, if the answer is none, it's time to take a self-audit, and it's time to ask yourself, how do I change this? 
And so I was almost done with a shameful week of self-auditing my time and feeling quite depressed of what I was realizing. And I received, I, this was one year ago, and I received a call from Mindvalley. And they tell me, Florencia, do you want to come as a, as a speaker to AFEST? To AFEST that happened one year ago. And I said, sure, uh, I can come. But you guys remember that my quest is only in Spanish, right? I said, yeah, well, but you, you can speak English. Come and do your thing. Fine, I go, I do my thing. Were any of you there last year? <laughs> um, you guys changed my life that day. <laughs> You changed my life that day, and let me, let me explain why. <laughs> Thank you for letting me catch my breath. <laughs> um, so what happened is I got off stage, and I got such overwhelmingly positive feedback and such overwhelmingly unanimous message of, do this in English. Take it to, to the English speaking world. We want to take you as a speaker. So I get booked as a speaker, eight, eight speaking engagements on the spot. And as I'm flying on the plane back home, I'm flying back to Spain, I make my big decision. I'm going to launch my brand in English. And so the first thing I do, I make it right on time to go for pickup to my son uh, at school. I pick him up, I take him to the beach, and I tell him, buddy, I have a big dream to share with you. And he goes, another book? <laughs> No, it's not another book. This is a big, scary one. I'm going to launch everything I do in English. And so he says, and why is that scary, Mom? Well, why? Because <laughs> nobody knows me here. Nobody knows me. I have no books, no products, no team, no office, and no guarantee that this will work. And so he looks at me and he goes, way to go, Mama. Way to go. And so the second decision I make is, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this fast. Because the time you give yourself to do something is usually the time it takes you to do it. So right now, I want you to imagine that dream you wrote. I want you to get in touch with that dream. And now I want you to imagine that you're the pilot of a plane. And that ahead of you, you have a short runway. And at the end of the runway, there's a big fat line of trees. And in the back of that plane is your family sitting. And your job is to make that thing fly. Would you go slowly, overthinking every step? Or would you hit that pedal and make that thing fly as fast as you can? So I decided I'm going to make this thing fly fast. First move I do, I arrive to Spain, I rent an office. Look at the glamour of this vision. Does it remind you of the Mind Valley offices? <laughs> Very much so. Not quite there. It was depressing. But you know, I wanted it fast. Within three weeks, it was looking better. Within five weeks, we had our first studio. We started producing content. I start hiring people. I decide I'm going to go and hire high-end people. I start consulting with some of the most brilliant minds in the industry, some of which are sitting here. And you know who you are. And thank you so much for joining and jumping into this project. And I start getting invitations to go to speak to, to some of the most amazing places in the Middle East and in Europe. And I, I don't want to sound like this was all unicorns and rainbows, because it wasn't. It was not easy. The first project we launched, we worked really hard on it. It completely bombed and failed. The Instagram account I started, and let me tell you, it's pretty humbling to start from zero. I went from over half a million in one, in one language to zero. And so I diligently work, and I post, and we have a social media and, uh, manager. And, and when we reach 20K, the account gets hacked and blocked. I have been waking up at 5 a.m. every single day for the past year, including Saturdays and Sundays, and doing a juggling act between running the business in Latin America, running the new business in Europe, and raising my two wonderful kids. And you might be wondering, Florencia, are you driving yourself to a burnout? No, I am not. And this is what I know about airplanes, and this is also what I know about dreams. An airplane will burn 60% of its fuel during takeoff. Now, once it is up in the air, it will fly across half the globe with the fuel that it has left. And dreams are the same way. At the beginning of your dream, you will have to struggle, probably. And struggle is probably not the word. You will have to put your head down and put the hours in and you will burn most of your fuel in the beginning. But once you get that thing flying, it can take you wherever you want to go. Winning is not about achieving things. Winning is about who we become in the process of achieving them. 
Winning is about tapping into our inner energy, the energy that gets ignited when we have a new big dream. Winning is about having energy, so much energy that you want to jump out of bed in the morning to start your day. Winning is about honoring who we are and who we may become. It's about listening to that inner voice that says, I will not settle for less than what I'm meant to be. Because if I am still alive, I am here to be exploring and be expanding and be growing. And we were all born with that inner force that can make absolutely any dream come true. One year ago, as I was standing here, you inspired me to go for my next dream. I sincerely hope that our time together today has inspired you to go for your next dream in a big, bold way. Thank you very much.